Hey guys, so here we have the clinical question number 15. Uh, this question is posted in our Instagram, uh, so you guys can go check it out. So here a 27 year old is brought to the casualty due to a four hour history of chest pain. Okay, this is important. That is localized to the middle of the chest and the upper sternal area. He, more like a cardiac kind of uh, chest pain. He describes it as intense. The patient has never before experienced a similar pain. He also describes some nausea, mild occipital headache, and no vomiting, uh, abdominal pain, or shortness of breath. So this is also an important thing, shortness of breath. A friend who accompanies him to the casualty says that they attended a party and the patient smoked crack cocaine okay shortly prior to his episode of the chest pain okay he did not consume any alcohol the patient has a history of intravenous drug abuse this guy is a drug addict he was treated with anti antibiotics for upper extremity cellulitis six months ago possibly due to the syringe use there is no family history of premature coronary artery disease the patient does not take any medications and has no known drug allergies on initial evaluation, the temperature is normal, blood pressure is 204-102 millimeter of HA. That's yes, kind of hypertensive. On the right arm, and it's 210-104 millimeter of HG on the left arm. So both the right arm and left arm, the pressure has been checked. So that's also quite important feature. Like it's most probably they want to differentiate another cause of this chest pain that could be aortic dissection because in aortic dissection there's always there's a difference in uh, the uh, bp would be around uh, 20 milli, more than 20 millimeter of hg with pulse deficit and so we are not seeing that kind of uh, def like difference uh, over here so it can't be aortic dissection acute aortic dissection as ruled out and respirations are 18 per minute Oxygen saturation is 99% is on room air. The patient appears thin, anxious, and agitated. Heart sounds are normal and no murmurs are heard. Lungs are clear to auscultation bilaterally. That's also an important uh, thing that you have to uh, note down. The abdomen is soft and non-tender. Lower extremity pulses are full and symmetric. There is no peripheral edema. The ECG uh, shows sinus tachycardia. ECG is also quite important. Okay, if there are any findings, that is very important. But is otherwise unremarkable. And the portable chest X-ray reveals clear lung field. So, it more it's not a non-cardiac or a lung cause for the chest pain. So from that itself, we can rule out that that option. Okay, so finger stick blood glucose level is 98 milligram per deciliter. Okay. So, yeah, so most probably they were asking what is the appropriate, the appropriate management, appropriate management for this patient. Hmm? Okay, so these are the options. Before we go to the options, let's discuss about uh, the, uh, the cardiovascular effects of cocaine intoxication. So can be categorized as physiological effects. So physiological effects includes hypertension, tachycardia, coronary vasoconstriction, there's an increased platelet activity and thrombus formation. And due to that, there is uh, clini the clinical manifestation is myocardial ischemia or infarction, aortic dissection and neurological ischemia or stroke. So these are the things that can be manifested in this kind of patient. So first of all, uh, we have to understand that this patient has chest pain, right? So this patient has chest pain and this kind of chest pain is called as cocaine related chest pain or it's also known as CRCP. Okay, this CRCP it could be of two types. It could be two types. That is that is uh, cardiac and non-cardiac. Okay, the cardiac, it can be either myocardial ischemia, could be myocardial ischemia, aortic dissection or acute coronary syndrome. Why, why aortic dissection? So aortic dissection because when these patients take cocaine, like uh, cocaine increases the uh, increases the blood pressure and leads to hypertension and that can lead to aortic dissection. And how to rule out uh, the aortic dissection? You have to check both the limbs uh, BP, that is the right and the left limb uh, BP. And if there is a difference of more than 20 millimeter of Hg in the systolic uh, blood pressure, then uh, you can consider it as an acute aortic dissection. Then the next thing is the known cardiac uh, type of chest pain. So it could be pneumothorax, hemorrhagic alveolitis, and crack lungs. So for this, uh, basically, we check the saturation of the patient and we also uh, go for a chest x-ray. 
so as to rule out it, uh, a known cardiac cause. For any chest pain, we precisely do this uh, to rule out the known cardiac cause. So crack lungs, okay, is like an acute pulmonary syndrome that occurs after the inhalation of this cocaine. So what are the symptoms of crack lung? It's fever, hypoxemia, respiratory failure. You have these kind of symptoms, it's most probably crack lungs. So that's that. And now let's see how cocaine is uh, giving us all these kind of uh, physiological effects. Okay, How are these giving us the uh, physiology? So when the cocaine, when you take cocaine, so it what happens is actually uh, is the cocaine inhibits the presynaptic reuptake of these norepinephrine in the central nervous system. So it's by blocking the transporters, the norepinephrine transporters. For example, over here, the dopamine transporter is blocked. And so there is no reuptake happening of the norepinephrine, and there is an increased, increased, increased norepinephrine or catecholamines. There is a lot of increased catecholamines. So these catecholamines then overstimulate these adrenergic receptors and and, the, and also there's a sympathetic outflow. There's an increased sympathetic outflow. And basically, these stimulates the alpha 1 and the beta 1 receptors. And when they get uh, stimulated, what happens is that tachycardia, myocardial contractility, uh, increase the myocardial contractility, and there will be coronary vasoconstriction, or for both coronary and also the arterial vasoconstriction, which leads to the hypertension, which is the cause of the hypertension. So all these features are going to increase the myocardial oxygen demand. But mind that even though the oxygen demand is increased, since we have this arterial vasoconstriction, we, there is, the supply is decreased. So we can't uh, we can't cope up like we can't go with the uh, demand supply is mismatched. So that leads to the acute coronary syndrome syndromes like this and, and angina and and stable angina and uh, and initially eventually what happens is ischemia and myocardial infarction happens. That's what happens in cocaine. Addicts. So the most another important thing is how does these cocaine addicts die? So you guys, you have to stop whoever is using cocaine. You guys have to stop it as soon as possible because it will eventually lead to your death. So I'm gonna say how is it going to like actually uh, cause death? So let's say the cocaine. Okay, you take a lot. You take an overdose of cocaine, and what happens is that there's increased sympathetic outflow and increased catecholamines, as explained earlier. And this leads to the increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, and increased myocardial contractility, which leads to the increase in the myocardial oxygen demand. Okay, in the same scenario itself, there is the coronary spasm and vasoconstriction, and there is also an increased platelet utterance. Cocaine leads to an increased platelet utterance, or and lead there's a high chance of thrombus formation okay and this also leads to a decrease in the oxygen supply the supply of the oxygen is decreased and this mismatch leads to ischemia the myocardial ischemia and further on it leads to myocardial infraction and it kills you you die if you're taking cocaine and another uh, on the parallel line itself you have to understand cocaine decreases the sodium transport and also uh, it acts as, so due to that there is a decrease in action potential and things like that and there is local anesthetic effect there's an anesthetic effect uh, due to this and this also leads to a decrease in the lv function and this also in turn uh, leads to arrhythmia there's qrs prolongation there's qt prolongation things like that leading to a decrease uh, lv function and this also causes death the QT prolongation also goes. So double reason for taking cocaine leading to death. So stop it as soon as possible if you are taking it. So that's that. And now let's go to the treatment part. So the treatment part, these are the treatment modalities that are being performed for these uh, patients. Like if a, co a cocaine intoxicated patient comes with CRCP, First, the, the best method is go for benzodiazepines and nitroglycerins. I'll explain why we are giving this. And never give beta blockers, so, okay? Never give beta blockers because they are contraindicated. I'll tell you the reason for that also. And another thing is uh, calcium channel for blockers for chest, uh, persistent chest pain. Pencholamines for persistent hypertension. Now let's talk about the algorithm for the treatment of uh, CRCP, that is cocaine-related chest pain. So for cocaine-related chest pain, we give antiplatelets like aspirin because you know that uh, it increases the platelet uh, adherence. So antiplatelets are given. Then benzodiazepine. Benzodiazepine is given. Oh, and still, if the chest pain persists, what you have to give is nitroglycerin. 
and if the chest pain doesn't persist then you can observe the keep the patient for observation up to 12 hours take serial ekgs and also cardiac biomarker stop on it all comes well and there's uh, no signs of any unstable angina or any stable any then rule out the myocardial infarction and follow up timely follow up is required and the most important thing stop drugs and drug abuse counseling has to be given in case if the patient has uh, features of unstable angina or instability you have to go for the anti thrombotic therapy anti platelet therapy and also if needed the cardiac catheterization okay now let's say the chest pain persists even when given aspirin or benzodiazepine then you have to go for the next step that is nitroglycerin and you have to check whether uh, check uh, with ecg that whether the patient has a stemi if the patient has stemi then you have to go if the patient doesn't first of all i'll say if the patient doesn't have stemi then the same manner you have to go like you have to go for observation and then check for in stemi then things like that if the patient has stemi the st elevation is st elevation myocardial infarction then you have to go for anti thrombotic uh, therapy and anti platelet therapy if there is an availability of cath lab for catheterization then there is no availability of cath lab then thrombotic therapy is given only if unequivocal evidence of stem if uh, the cath lab is a catheterization has to be done uh, is primary percutaneous coronary intervention has to be done and uh, the discharge the discharge the discharge drugs that are given is the basic drugs that we give for any heart patient or any my patient that is aspirin clopidogrel statins and ease inhibitors and with this there is also an added thing extra thing that you have to give. stop the damn drugs and drug abuse counseling has to be given okay so let's see how benzodiazepine is actually helping in these cocaine related chest pain okay so the role of uh, benzodiazepine is that it decreases the sympathetic outflow and it reduces the tachycardia and hypertension and improves the myocardial ischemia it also comes the cocaine induced psychomotor agitations and this decreases the myocardial oxygen demand so the uh, options that we had over here is aspirin and clopidogrel this is given as a discharge discharge therapy after every kind of intervention is done so it is not given immediately the next thing is the intravenous lorazepam this is the answer that is the benzodiazepine that has to be given immediately uh, okay and next is intravenous metoprolol this should never be given never be given because beta blockers are contraindicated why are beta blockers contraindicated so basically uh, what happens over here is that uh, these patients will have an unopposed alpha 1 receptor alpha 1 receptor uh, mediated vasoconstriction and uh, vasoconstriction and what happens in that constriction and so therefore worsens the condition of the patient condition of the patient <clears throat> so should never give beta blockers beta blockers are contraindicated in crcp and then intravenous fentolamine yeah that can be given intravenous fentolamine is an alpha receptor uh, antagonist and that can be uh, used uh, in case if the uh, the other drugs gets failed Uh, by like benzodiazepines, uh, if you use and it is not uh, working, low molecular weight heparin. Yeah. So see, we already said that it could be two causes of this CRCP. It could be the chest cause, cardiac cause, and it could be the uh, non-cardiac cause. So before uh, like uh, ruling out the ACS, the acute coronary, this cardiac cause is uh, if it's a cardiac cause, the chest pain is due to a cardiac cause. It's due to ACS. you should not give low molecular weight heparin that is you can't give low molecular weight uh, heparin just empirically to any patient that comes with uh, cocaine related uh, chest pain you have to rule out the cardiac and also the non cardiac cause so this is about uh, the crcp and uh, cocaine uh, how it uh, leads to death and things like that So guys, uh, please do uh, subscribe our YouTube channel. We will be putting uh, like every other day uh, these kind of clinical uh, questions and uh, explanation. And also do uh, follow us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and also in Telegram. We will be posting a lot of updates over there. And uh, if you like the uh, you, uh, the video, please do hit the like button and also share the uh, video. Thank you guys.